This is Coombe Cassius for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're at the final press conference for Akoli Shizlak, live on Sunday night. I'm joined by Edward Hearn. Do you know what I keep saying today? What? All day. Bosh! Bosh! Double bosh! Ba bosh! Um, I don't know why. Yeah. Well, you're, you're late to the party. I know, but... Bosh, anyway. How are you, Edward? Um, I'm unbelievable, to be honest with you. I'm feeling amazing. I didn't actually have a very good sleep last night, but I woke up to some very good news, and I woke up feeling blessed, and I just, I just love in life at the moment, to be honest with you. I think we should love life. There's a lot of things going on around the world where you start to look at and realise how lucky are we that we aren't put in certain situations. Never take things for granted. You never know when those situations might present themselves. So when you've got the ability to feel good, be healthy, feel healthy, make the most of it and enjoy your life. And that's how I feel right now. So it's, a, it's an absolute pleasure and an honour to be standing here with arguably one of the great sports presenters or reporters of our generation in Coogan Cassius. And I actually mean that because I, when I was just saying that just then, I was taking the piss, but I started to think about it and I was thinking, actually, in terms of the boxing industry, although you are very limited in terms of ability, because of how long you've been doing it and, and the success of IFL, you are genuinely one of the most prestigious reporters in the world. Someone said to me the other day, and I won't embarrass them, they said to me, Eddie, how does it feel to be the best in the world at what you do? And I thought to myself, wow, I am the best in the world at what I do. And I know we can all have a laugh, and, but let's be honest, like, no one can touch me, right? So I am the best promoter in the world, bar none. And so in my chosen field, I am the best in the entire world, right? There is an argument that you are the best in the entire world at what you do, right? Now, I've always been a little bit of a star. It doesn't matter, you know, where I was growing up. But you, you know, we're talking about, remember when you were doing the old uh, deep pan pizza and, the, you know, when you were working in there in Basildon. Who would have thought that in your chosen field, you would have become the best in the world at what you do? What an unbelievable feeling. I bet no one's ever told you that before. So give yourself a pat on the back, son. Can you do it? Can you just... Cheers, son. Cheers, son. Genuinely. Ge that is amazing. That for your chosen field in your profession there is an argument it's not an argument with me but there's an argument with you that you are the best in the world at what you do and that is an amazing feeling well done son look, look I don't know what to say yeah bouncing. I don't know what to say mate but you know like just want to say like yeah, anyway just crack on yeah crack come on, okay. on anyway so why does in your opinion the best promoter in the world Keep losing these purse bids, mate. Because you, when you make a bid for a fight, you make a bid in relation to the commercial value of the fight. And it doesn't matter whether you lose it by 60 or 70,000 or you lose it by 5 million. That's your interpretation of the value. Uh, Demetrius Andrade, which I presume you're referring to, against Zach Parker has really absolutely no interest in America at all, quite frankly. And that was the value of the fight we were bidding with in America. Also, in the UK, it's not a particularly big fight, but I would have liked to have delivered it for Demetrius in America, and that's what I felt like the fight was worth. You don't, you know, you've got to understand business. You don't walk around. This, this, this sport is full of fur coat and no knickers. It's full of people that want to buy Rolls Royces but can't afford the petrol, right? So you have to just behave in a way that's not, not ego orientated, not. I'm going to spend more because Dave from Grimsby says I keep losing purse bids. Each individual fight has an individual value. And with, that was the individual value. We felt that a fight that, to be honest with you, like, it's not even a big fight. But we liked the route because it's an interim title and the winner of that fight could fight someone else and then could become the mandatory for Canelo Alvarez. So now we've got the decision of do we take that fight or do we take another fight? And that's what Demetrius Andre will have to decide. Is there an argument that your comments today are just because you didn't win the bid? Uh, yeah, obviously if I won the fight, I wouldn't be telling you that it's not that, it's not that big a fight in America. But look, I mean, just just one thing clear. Demetrius Andre against Zach Parker in America, I'm sorry, it's not a big fight. 
but there is a route that could make sense for us to go down that route. So that's why I bid for it. I don't really... Like, With sixty-five percent in your favour. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I'm not at that level. You can't go to Demetrius Andre and say, oh, "Do you want to take X to do the fight?" And we just—that was the money that I was. I think Demetrius was what one point two million purse for fighting Zach Parker. I think that's pretty great money, really. To be honest with you, he's been earning more money to defend his world title. It's not a world championship fight; it's an interim title. So, you know, unfortunately, that was the value that I felt that fight had. I can't be more honest than that. Um, so we'll see what happens. Okay, um, so some pictures on social media surfaced yeah. today yeah. No, uh, of Alexander Usyk, yeah. who travelled, he was in the UK for a couple of days, travelled back to the Ukraine. Um, can you kind of make comment, obviously it's a sensitive issue, what's going on uh, in the world at the moment regarding Ukraine and Russia, but he's gone back there. Um, can you kind of make comment on that? Well, he lives there. I guess he's there with his family are there, so... I would think he would fly back. I mean, people keep saying, you know, uh, would this affect Canelo against Bivol? Would this affect Alexander Usyk? I can't tell you what Alexander Usyk's thinking in his mind, but for me, the answer is no. I mean, I would guess Alexander Usyk will start camping about four weeks' time. I guess, like Dimitri Bivol, who will start camping Los Angeles this weekend or on Monday. If that's what's required of Usyk, he'll do the same. But it's a bit like you say; it's a very sensitive subject, and I can't, you know, tell you what it, certain individuals are doing whose country is at war. But I don't have, I don't expect it to have any bearing on Anthony Joshua against Alexander Usyk. If that's where you're going with it. Yeah, oh, that was the question. Really, do you think that will have any effect? But you've yeah. answered that. I feel like no. But again, I don't. You know, it's, a sen it's a sensitive issue. Your country's at war. You've seen Vladimir Klitschko and Vitaly Klitschko talking about going to fight for in the army. I mean, wow. Well, I was actually thinking, I, I, I fired in a little um, message on the WhatsApp last night, the WhatsApp group, where all my friends were on there. So about three of us. And um, I said, would you, would you go and fight for your country? Like When you look back, you know, when you talk about V-Day and stuff like that, the heroes that went to fight for Britain said goodbye to their kids and their parents and just poodled off with a bag to go and fight in another country. I mean, we're not really made of the same stuff. I, I can't stand there hand on heart and tell you that I'd be queuing up to go. And I asked a few other people today, I won't ask them, and they went, I ain't going over there, I'm not doing it. Would you, I mean, what would you do? Well, I'm probably in the well, same... You'd be absolutely useless. Well, Firstly, you'd, you'd have one of those Hamlets on the go. Then they'd go... Right, Coogan, advance. You'd get 30 yards down. Be... <coughs> right? So I'm not sure they'd even ask you to go. But if they did and your physical situations were different, what would you do? Uh, I really can't answer that because I genuinely don't know. But what I will say is fair play to the Klitschko's. It's incredible. He's in a tough position as well because he's joined the army. He's, he's the mayor of Kiev, I believe. So Charlie, oh, yeah. still, I mean, but this is, you're talking about tough, tough men different made a different stuff and I'm not ashamed to say that I think it would be just going a little bit and I might have to just duck off somewhere but wow when you look back at what people have sacrificed for this country and then you see actually at times some of the you know the, the country falling apart in many areas and you look at Ukraine and Russia anyway it's another conversation but yeah just thinking that really but going back to your question I do not feel like it will affect the anti-Joshua Alexander Usyk fight Okay, um, Sunday night. Yes. Got to keep remembering. This is Sunday night Sunday. boxing. Sunday. Um, a little birdie told me you've actually done a few tickets for this. Um, all right, for a yeah, Sunday we'll have, night. We'll have over five thousand in there. I mean, I think it's not. I think when you look at Sunday night boxing, I think there's a massive argument that from a from a viewer's perspective, you have a much better captive audience at home on your sofa. Or the beauty of the zone is can be anywhere watching, but. Obviously, from an event experience, from a live event experience, people are more likely to go out on a Saturday night. So, yeah, we probably would have done seven or 8,000 if we were on a Saturday night. But still, I'm very happy with the crowd. There's going to be a lot of Polish in there as well. There's going to be a great atmosphere. We're going to start at 3 o'clock, and the main event's going to be at 9 o'clock, which is actually an argument that that should be the timings for a Saturday night. Um, but 
again, diff difficult with the number of fights to get on a card. So I think it's a really good card. I think Akoli Sislak is a really high level elite cruiserweight matchup. I think Galau Yafai against Bautista is absolutely fascinating. I think Jordan Gill against Gurphy for the European title is a really good fight. You've got Anthony Fowler in a good fight. You've got Chev Clark, Olympian, making his debut. Uh, you've got Fabio Waldley returning at heavyweight. You've got Dempsey McKean. You've got Campbell Hatton against Joe Ducker. You've got John Hedges. Uh, I don't believe I've missed anyone out, but it's a really good day, night of boxing. And be interesting to see the numbers for, for a Sunday night. I love the in-event experience. I love the night out. So for me, you'll never move Saturdays to Sundays. But let's see how it does. Thoughts on uh, Josh Taylor and Jack Cattrall tomorrow night? On who's going to win? Um, I, I mean, I, I think Cattrall is a, is a good fighter, but... When I've watched him recently over the last couple of years, he's been so uh, stagnant waiting for his opportunity. I just feel like Josh Taylor. I, th I think Jack will have a real go. He's a good kid, kid so I don't mean to be disrespectful, good man. You know, great team around him with Nigel and Jamie. And I think they'll give it everything, but I just think Josh Taylor is a, he's a very talented fighter and I think he'll stop him. Who wins? A prime Golovkin versus a prime Andre Wall? Great, great fight. I mean, I saw that. I mean... Let's just get one thing clear, right? Gennady Golovkin, when he was looking for opportunities, like, and still now, would never duck anyone. Like, Andre Ward, the problem with Andre Ward is, is Andre Ward, and you've got to be careful because, you know, he's, he does it, but he was never a draw, right? And that's, that's but he was brilliant. Right, so I'm not having to go Andre Ward because I know you don't like it. But the truth is, like, I was at the Super Six final with Carl Froch. I was there. There was about 1,500 people there, right, for a massive fight. Carl had, didn't have the profile. You know, he just joined up with us. He was a different fighter then. But Andre Ward was brilliant. Even when they boxed Kovalev, didn't do big numbers, right? So Ward Golovkin is just an absolutely brilliant fight. Andre Ward may have been unbeatable with his star but Golovkin is so dangerous was so dangerous like I don't know I mean it's a fantasy matchup of a fight I would love to see the fight I would really love to see is Golovkin against Froch I mean that is Froch had one of the best chins you've ever seen and that fight is just brutal brutal a bit late now possibly um, Eddie any kind of developments in the whole Dillian White situation have you just had a meeting with his guys before the presser um Everything's good. I think they had a meeting with um, Queensbury lawyers today, going through bits and pieces, and you know, trying to find uh, uh, a solution to a few problems. It's not long to go. It's like it's a nightmare, really, because what is it, seven weeks or something? It's, yeah, and um, you know, you'd really want you've got to get coach packages out. I think that if they're going to go for a full ninety thousand, I think twenty or thirty have got to be coach packages and. You know, it's, um, they're up against it time-wise, but look, you know, I think no one's really going to push or promote the fight because it's just of everything that's happened. So just get it, get it up and announced. And I guess, I guess, uh, I think the plan is, I think next Monday or Tuesday to announce the fight. So we'll see what happens. Uh, just finally, any developments regarding Canelo? Um, I feel like we're uh, we're making good progress there. I mean, I don't want to say too much because. It is literally the biggest thing that could happen for me and to zone a matchroom. So normally I would just open my mouth, but all I'm saying right now is is we're very close to an agreement. Um, hopefully we can give you some good news soon. Uh, I'm gonna be unbearable if I pull it off to pre-warn you. And uh, no, it would, be, it would be massive for us. So, you know, fingers crossed over the next, even potentially over the next couple of hours, we could, uh, we could have some good news. I'm hanging around. You can hang around, I'll let you know. I'll, I'll drop you a line, and if, if, if we get any movement, we'll do another piece. No worries. Eddie Hearn, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. We look forward to Sunday night's show. Let's get it. Sunday night, live on The Zone.